What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Introduction to Java Programming series. Uh, today we're going to talk about variables. Now, um, quick aside before I get into variables, uh, this right here is a comment. I forgot to mention that in episode one. Uh, pretty much anything after these double slashes is not going to be read by Java. It's just going to be here just for either another programmer to read or for you to go back and read. So here I'm, I'm separating the basic variables from the not so basic variables. So if I come back to this file later on, I'll be able to very quickly be able to just read these comments and see, all right, everything here is going to be basic variables. Everything here is going to be the not so basic variables. All right. So uh, that's a comment. Uh, so here we go. Uh, when I was thinking about making this episode, I was trying to figure out what would be the best way to, uh, explain the variables to you guys because uh there's there's a good a good bunch of uh primitive data types the primitive data types are basically just the uh the variables that were written into java when it was first made uh so there's a whole bunch of whole bunch of them but there's only a few that i would consider the basic ones that you would probably use in your day-to-day -day lives uh, as programmers and then there's the ones that are not so basic that you would use if you're a more advanced programmer, maybe if you want to make your program more efficient. So I'm going to first tell you guys the basic ones that even now I pretty much only use. I've never really used the uh, the not so basic types. Maybe I should, but I just haven't. Uh, so we're going to start with the basic ones. So first we're going to do the numbers, the integers and doubles. So First, we have an integer, which is an int. Uh, like in the in episode one, I had had a method that returned an int, so that's an integer returns a number. Now, an integer is any number without a decimal, so it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Uh, so I'm gonna just say int i. I'll name you can name whatever you want. I'm gonna say int i equals ten, and then you go semicolon to end the line. So that just declared an integer i which equals 10. So let's say I wanted to change the value of i later on. I don't have to say int i because I already declared that i is an integer. So I could just say i equals nine and then a semicolon. So I first declared i is 10, then I changed the value of i to nine. So I could even go like this. I could first declare i, say I don't know what i is gonna be equal to yet. I could just say i is going to be an integer, save some space in memory for i and then later on i could say all right i know i is going to be equal to 10 now so there you go so now i is, I is equal to 10 so we could we could do our system out dot print ln and we could print out i and uh here we go so i made a new new file named variables.job you guys could use the same file as last time or you can make a new one doesn't really matter so here you go i equals 10. So let's say I want to say i equals nine, right? Equals nine first. Oops. I equals nine. Then system out print ln i. So pretty much what's going to happen is it's first it's going to say i equals nine. Then it's going to print out nine. Then it's going to come over here. It's going to change i to ten, and then it'll print out ten. So let's let's see if I'm right. So there you go nine and then ten. So there you go. That's that's integers not so difficult all right so now we have a number with a decimal which is called a double or a real depending on what what uh programming language you're using uh pretty much what this number is called is like a floating point number uh but the basic type that you most likely use is going to be a double so double we'll say double d equals 2.5 and there you go D equals 2.5. So now we can do the same thing. We could say D now equals three. So now that I said three, so three doesn't have an a decimal point here. What's gonna print out? Let's see. Print D. Okay. Let's come over here and run the file. It's gonna print 3.0. So it automatically just concatenates uh, a decimal point with a with a zero right on the end there. So there's that. We could even say D equals I. And what's what's going to print out? 
it's going to print 9.0. Same thing. It's just going to add the 0.0 to the end. All right, so that's that's all the numbers. Am I am I forgetting anything? I don't think I am. I think that that's all the numbers that you're going to need to know to make any program that you want. Uh, it might not be as efficient if you if you used maybe a smaller number, which we'll get into later on. Uh, but uh, you can you could use these two numbers here and make any program. All right, so now let's move on to uh, letters, words, sentences, and those are going to be in two uh, variables: a char, which is character, and a string, which uh, I think I I even oh I think uh, oh yeah last episode I was had string up here. I was explaining the the main method deck relation deck yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we first we have a char. So a char is just one character. So we could say char c equals uh, I don't know c. So we just use the single quotes to declare a character. So say we want to print this out system out dot print ln c. What's going to print c? There you go. Now, what we could also do, let's say we wanted to print the number value of C, because every character has a number value, so it's 99. So pretty much Java uses the ASCII language, or a symbol language, which pretty much it's a, a whole list of numbers, and each number is a, uh, a symbol, it's associated with a symbol. So if you wanted to print C, you could say, here we go, we could say char, we could cast this integer to a character. So now it's going to say, all right, let's print out the letter that's associated with the number 99. And what's going to print out? It should be C. There you go, C. So let's say we wanted to print out 9. What's going to print out with 9? Nothing. Okay, I'm not sure what, what that would be. It would be 98 should be lowercase b yeah there you go I uh, don't know why 9 is nothing maybe it's a space who knows all right so anyway that's a character so that's that's denoted by a single quotes you know we had our strings when we print when we did our system out that print line we did those double quotes those would be for words single quotes for letters all right so now strings strings is sounds basically it is what it sounds like a string is a string of characters it's a list a whole list of characters that are connected i don't know in a, in a list so let's say we want to have print out we have, or declare string s to equal uh hello so there you go this would be a string of characters this is the characters h e l l o in a string a list of, of characters. That's all it is. If you uh, if you wanted to program in like C, a slightly lower level language than Java, uh, you can't really even declare a string. There's no such thing as a string. There only only th if you wanted to declare a, a word, you would have to declare a list of characters. So that's that that's a that's a string. Just a list of characters. You could put spaces. You could say hello world. And then say we wanted to print out the same thing that we printed out last time. Print out s. And run the file. It's hello world. Same thing as, as we did in our last tutorial. If I open up this file, uh, opened up down here. Strange. Just move it up here. We printed out hello world. We just declared the string inside of the system out print line method rather than creating its own variable and then printing out that variable. All right, so those are the letters and words. Last thing we need, we need a logic operator. Uh, what is a logic operator, you ask? That is pretty much just true or false. You know, everyone says that uh, computers are just a whole bunch of ones and zeros. That's basically what a logic operator is. It's a one or a zero, one meaning true, zero meaning false, that's it. So in Java, that's gonna be called a Boolean. So we'll say boolean b equals true. All right, and then we could print this out. Print out b. 
and it's going to print out true. So the only only types of uh, the only uh, uh, values that B can have is true or false, nothing else. It'll give you an error if you set it to anything else. So true or false. So this is going to be useful, but right now it's not useful at all. There's no reason to just have a, a true or false operator just randomly sitting like that. You don't ever want to print out true or false unless you're maybe debugging your program. Uh, this is going to be useful later on when we get into uh, if statements. We're going to say, if this is true, then do this, or if this is false, do this. That's the only reason why we'd ever want to have a uh, Boolean in our programs. All right, so now, if you don't want to get confused in any way, I'd say just stop watching this tutorial right now because this is all you're gonna ever need, unless I'm really forgetting something. I don't think I am though. No, I'm not. All right, so uh, we're gonna go to the not so basic types of variables that, uh, I don't know, it's probably good to know, but I don't think you'll need them at this level that I'm assuming most of you are out there. Uh, but we'll do it anyway. So let's say we want to only store a number, a very small number. We don't need to store any big numbers and we know that the number is gonna say be one through 10 always. Well, to save some space and memory, say we have a big program that is going to need to be fast. Well, then in that case, we want to use a byte rather than an int. So we could say bytes uh, two b's equals three. So there, that's a byte. So the difference between a byte and an int is a byte uh, can only store numbers between negative 128 and 127. Uh, so it saves, saves some memory. You can't really store any large numbers and int stores numbers from negative two to the 31 uh, all the way up to two to the 31 or positive two to the 31 minus one. So it's a very large number of numbers that you could store. It's uh, an int is a 32 bit uh, variable as opposed to an eight bit variable uh, in, a, in a byte. So a, pretty much what that means is just a byte is uh, four times smaller than uh, an int. So it's just you could store four bytes in the same space you would store one int. So if you if you know that you need a small number uh, in between negative 128 and 127, then then you you want to use a byte. But uh, like I said, at this level you probably don't need it. All right. So next is going to be a short. Say you want to store a uh, let's say I don't want to say we'll say ss. <laughs> you know what? No, we'll say um short short no we can't do that um short sh i don't know um all right so a short is twice the size of a byte um we get stored numbers between negative 32,000 something up to 32,700 something uh so it's slightly bigger than a byte well slightly it's uh a lot bigger than a byte, but it's also a lot smaller than an int, just in the middle. So let's say 40. Uh, so I forgot to show you. So here we go. So so we got byte BB. Three is fine. 30 is fine. 300 is not fine. What's it going to tell you here? It's going to say, well, you can't you can't put 300 in a byte. You need to use an int. That's basically what it's saying. And then with a with a short, 40 is fine, 400 is fine, 4,000 is fine, but 40,000, it's going to say you can't do that. You need to use an int. All right, so that's a short. And then uh, lastly, we have a long. A long is going to be bigger than an int. Uh, let's see. What have, we can use an L. Long L equals, so we could, we could go all the way up to from negative 2 to the 63, all the way up to two to the sixty positive two to the sixty three minus one. So we could do. Uh, we'll just say, let's see how many we could go up. Uh, just put a semicolon. Oh, there we go. That's this. Is, oh, that's the longest we could use right there. I'm not sure what that number is, but that's it's pretty big. So if you know that you need a giant number, then you want to use a long. And if that's even too. Uh, not long enough, then there's such thing as a big integer, which uh, that's uh, not a primitive variable, but I'm not even going to get into that because there's a very small 
there's a very small chance you would ever need a number bigger than that. And uh, if you do, I'm sure by the time you get up to that, uh, you'll be well versed enough in Java that you could just Google it and figure out how to declare a big integer yourself. So this is just primitive variables. So that's all the integers. So we got the tiny, tiny one, the middle one, and the very, very long number. So now let's move on to floating point numbers. So we already have the double up here. Let's say we wanted to have a smaller double. Yeah, it's uh, half the size of a double. This is just going to be called a float because it's a floating point number. So we could say float f. I don't think I used f yet. Uh, f equals 150.45. Oh, so the difference, see the problem is it's going gonna, it's gonna to say, well, you're trying to, to cast a double number into a float variable. So the way to differentiate between the two is we have to put an f after our number. We have to say 150.45f. And that way it'll, it'll know that we're using a, a float rather than a double. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to use half the memory, then a double. It's going to say, all right, you're, you're going to do a double. It's going to be a number smaller than whatever the largest number that a double or a float can use. And it's going to, uh, it's only going to reserve that amount of memory for it. So there's that. That's, that's a float. Uh, what, am I, what else am I missing? I think, I think that's it. What am I missing? Got byte, got short, int, long, float, double, boolean, char, string. String's not really a primitive variable, but I just feel like it's, you know, we need to know it. So I added that in, but everything other than a string is a primitive variable. And then we got string for just every other use that we, that we have uh, whenever we need like a sentence or a word. All right, so that's the variables. Next, we're going to probably either do uh, conditional statements like if statements, or we'll do like operators like addition, subtract, subtraction, multiplication, division, one or the other. So I'll still have to decide that. But uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. And uh, until next time, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Uh, sorry, guys, if I knew I forgot something. Uh, with the long here, so I, I did say that this would be too long for long, right? But you have to add an L to let Java know that you're making a long. So I completely forgot. It was uh, it was pretty much here. It was it was trying to to cast this as an int, and then it was saying, oh, this number is way too long to be an int. But uh, if we put an L, we could continue on with our zeros. So let's see how long we could actually make this long. Still going, still going. There you go. Right there, that's the longest you can make it. So I knew that that number was a little bit too short to be long, but uh, there you go. Sorry about that. Completely forgot. Uh, I've kind of remembered right after I stopped recording. So uh, there you go. That's a long. But yeah, thanks for watching.